grade 8 math number 8.2c. We've been talking about systems of equations. I'm going to show you how to check your answer by graphing when we use a substitution method. So we're going to use substitution to solve for our linear equations and we solve for one variable in one of the equations. We substitute the value for that variable into the other equation and we substitute the values into the original equations and once the equations are in slope intercept form now we talked about how to do that a couple videos ago we can check our values by graphing them and we know it's easier once they're in slope intercept form very easy to graph because we can see where the y-intercept is we can see what the slope is all right so here's our system of equations for this video our first equation is 2x plus y equals 5, and our second one is negative 3x plus 2y equals 17. So I'm going to start with this first equation because I see the y doesn't have a coefficient. It's by itself. It's going to be easier to get alone. I'm not going to have to do any division. I probably won't run into any fractions. So I'm going with number 1. So we've got 2x plus y equals 5. First thing we do is subtract 2x from each side of the equation. So I can isolate this y, get it by itself, right? That makes that a zero pair. And then we put the two, net, minus 2x two on this side. So now we've got y equals 5 minus 2x. We could have also written it as y equals 2x minus 2x plus 5. I could have written it either way, but I decided to go this way because most people are going to add the negative 2x to the end. So I'm going to show you what happens, okay? So now we know that y equals this 5 minus 2x, okay? This whole thing, that's what y equals. So we're going to use this whole thing and substitute it in wherever there's a y, all right? Into that second equation, the negative 3x, 2y is 17, okay? So here it is. So we're going to put this whole thing to be y, all right? So I throw it in here. So now I've got to use the distributive property. So I've got 2 times a positive 5, that's a 10, and i got 2 times a negative 2x, that's a negative 4x. Now, there's one or two ways I could do this. I could combine like terms and put the negative 3x and the negative 4x together to get a negative 7x, and then have the plus 10 equals 17. Or I could just start trying to isolate the x right away by subtracting this 10. I create a zero pair here. And I get 7 on this side, because 17 take away 10 is 7. Now I've got negative 3x minus 4x. Well, that's going to give us a negative 7x. And we're going to keep trying to isolate to get the x on one side with inverse operations. So I'm going to divide each side by negative 7. That's going to create our friend the invisible 1, right? And 7 divided by negative 7 is a negative 1. So we know x is a negative 1. So either way, we would have gotten a negative 1, whether we combined like terms or just started subtracting or adding as inverse on each side. It's just easier to combine like terms sometimes because you'll seem to go a little quicker. But we know x is equal to negative 1 now, don't we? All right, so we know x is equal to negative 1. We got that far, right? So now we're going to plug it in to the first equation where that x is. So instead of 2x plus y equals 5, we're going to have 2 times negative 1 plus y equals 5. See? We just put it wherever the x was, all right? So now 2 times a negative 1 is a negative 2 plus y equals 5. So I'm going to add 2 to each side so that I can isolate this y. And I do, and that creates a zero pair. And we add 2 to this side, we get a 7. We get y equals 7. So now I know my ordered pair is a negative 1, 7. See that? This is what x equals, negative 1. And here's what y equals. It's a 7. So to make sure that these two are in slope-intercept form, like we did a couple videos ago, if you missed that, you're going to want to go back and see my video on how to change the equation into slope-intercept form because they're a lot easier to graph, okay? Because you can see the y-intercept, you can see the slope. So here's our two equations, okay? Here's going to be the pink line, here's going to be the blue line, all right? So our first equation needs to be in slope-intercept form, so I'm going to take this 2x away from this side, all right? That eliminates it. I'm going to put it on this side, and I get y equals negative 2x plus 5, all right? 
So now that's in slope intercept form. And we know the five is our y intercept. That's where it's going to hit the y axis. And we know our slope is a negative two. And remember, when the slope is a negative, it falls to the right. It goes this way. All right. This one's going to have a positive 1.5 so that it's going to go this way. See, it rises to the right. So this one needed to be put in slope intercept form. So I had negative 3x plus 2y equals 17. I added 3x to each side to get rid of this, okay, to eliminate it. So now I've got a 2y plus 3x plus 17, but we need to get the y by itself. So I had to divide each term by 2. And what happened was it gave us fractions. This turned into our friend the invisible 1, so I got y by itself, but I got 3 over 2. That's a 1 and a half, isn't it? I wrote it as a decimal as 1.5. So I have 1.5x and 17 divided by 2. That's 8 and a half. That's 8.5. So I wrote that as a decimal. So now I've got to plot these points, okay? So the first one we've got is, for the pink line, is we know it hits the y-axis at plus 5, all right? So let's look very closely here. Here's our y, okay? And the pink one hits it at plus 5 right there. See that? And our slope is a negative 2. So that would be for rise over run, that would be a negative 2 over a 1, right? Rise over run, because negative 2 over 1 is negative 2 as a fraction, all right? So that means we have to go down 2 and over 1, and our line is going to fall to the right. So I was at 5, so I went down 1, 2, and my run went over 1, and I put my point right there, okay? That's my slope, negative 2 over 1 for the rise over the run. So I got my two pink points, and I drew my line for the pink line, okay? So now we've got to plot where this equation is. So I know it hits the y-axis at 8.5, all right? So here's 8.5. It's right in between the 8 and the 9. Here's 8.5, all right? I also know my rise is a 1.5. That's going to be one and a half boxes, all right? And it's positive, so it's going to go up this way, all right? So I was at 8.5. I have to go up one and a half. So by going up, to, sorry about the focus there. By going up a half, I'm at 9. And going up 1, I'm at 10. And I have to move over 1, all right? So that puts me at this spot. And then I drew my line through those two points. And where did this line cross with this line? Where did they intersect? At negative 1 on the x and 7 on the y. Negative 1 on the x and 7 on the y. Look, it worked. The point of intersection is negative 1, 7. That means we did it correctly. So that's how we check by graphing. Once you get what x and y values are and you get your ordered pair, make sure to put them into slope-intercept form because it's so much easier to graph them because you know where it hits the y-axis, your y-intercept, and you know what your slope is, all right? So just remember, when you're confused about the slope, when it's negative, it falls to the right. When it's positive, it rises to the right. And remember that if you do 1.5 over 1, that's the same thing as 1.5, and if you do the negative 2 over 1, that's the same thing as negative 2 as a fraction, right? And that tells you your rise over your run, all right? Okay, I hope that was helpful, and we're going to continue on talking about our systems of equations, and the next thing it looks like we're going to talk about is using a graph to estimate the solution of a system, all right? Did you know that you can estimate the solution of a system? All right, that's going to be 8.2D. I'll see you there. Keep plugging. Keep trying. Don't quit. And if you feel like you're having trouble, go back a couple videos, watch them again, and then move forward again. As long as you understand each video, it'll be a piece of cake, and you'll keep moving forward, and next thing you know, you're going to be doing calculus and trigonometry. All right? You'll be working at NASA. I'll see you next video. Bye.